How does trash talking impact performance? Uh, well, that's one of my favorite topics. So trash talking is a construct that captivates me. Why in a competitive situation would somebody trash talk somebody else? And it could be that it psychs us up, it psychs ourselves up, um, but it can have unintended consequences in really motivating somebody else. Mm. So one of the things that happens is when I start engaging in trash talking, you become more invested, your, the, the psychological stakes are greater for you, you become more interested in beating me. And I've run a number of studies looking at this and it's so fun because people become just enraged and <laughs> focused. And when we feel anger, it's very motivating. Now, it's not great for precision or careful tasks. Mm. We can lose our focus a little bit mm -hmm. if we need sort of a delicate or steady hand. So you can imagine, let's say a golf player, they need a steady hand. That anger, that extra motivation is not helpful. If it's a long distance runner, it's incredibly powerfully motivating. Mm -hmm. Now, so trash talking motivates the target of the trash talking, and it can also motivate the person doing the trash talking. But for both, it, it raises the psychological stakes. And you see this a lot with rivalry. Within rivalry, where the psychological stakes are already high, this is something that can elevate it still more. And if you want to turn somebody into an instant rival, trash talking is a way to go. Well, we're seeing so much of it already in the 2016 election cycle and sort of the Trump phenomenon. Do you see anything interesting in how different candidates are reacting differently to oh, the trash absolutely. talking? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, well, is it strategic on their part? It's super strategic. And you see, for example, uh, I mean, Trump is letting loose with a lot of trash talking. And in some cases, it works. In some cases, it doesn't. Mm. So he really got under Jeb Bush's skin with the low energy yeah. idea. And Jeb Bush has been trying to counter that idea right. and saying, oh, I'm a high energy person or Jeb's a high energy name. I mean, silly stuff, like, like he's really playing into it. And in that case, Trump is succeeding in knocking out what he perceived to be his most serious rival, mm -hmm. at least at that time. Now, when he went after Rubio, it didn't work. And I think it's sort of mixed with Carly Fiorina. Like mm. that, he had ended up having to walk back. And mm. the problem is you end up looking like a mean-spirited bully. Mm -hmm. And my advice is when you're going negative in a campaign, that's the kind of thing that works best when you're down to the finalists. Mm. When you come down to you know the final Republican versus Democrat, a lot of negative ads get run, mm -hmm. and a lot of people get sort of tuned out, or they feel like, well, I don't like either of these, but uh, I'll go with the one I like, le you know, the sort of the lesser of the two evils. There, the negative campaigning can work. Mm -hmm. When it's at this early stage and you have so many rivals, it's very hard to get it all right without it coming back mm. to you. Is it an interesting reaction that so many people are really into the trash talking or the, what they perceive as non-politically correct? Yeah, so, so, there's something, so, so there's something, right, so there's yeah. sort of the straight talk is sort of appealing. And there's some candidates like Chris Christie who intended to develop his whole campaign based upon straight talk. And he's been out straight talked by Trump. Hmm. So, so Trump, comes out looking, you know, I'm not PC and here's, you know, here's me. So there's a sort of a rebellious mm. allure about it. There's also something very refreshing. That is, we find, you know, like we don't know what candidates are really saying or thinking. Mm. And I think Hillary Clinton is sort of the opposite extreme. Here's somebody who's so careful, who's so right. studied, who ran a campaign and for the f first several months never held any press conferences you don't really know what she's thinking or what she's doing and sort of, you know, the, I, th I think one reason why this email controversy has lasted mm. so long is because she was very careful about the words she used in describing it. Right. And so yeah. nobody knows quite what's going on or what's going through her head. 
with Trump, you know what's going through his head. He's saying it. Every last thing, right? So, so it's sort of refreshing. It's rebellious. <laughs> and I think he has appealed to some people who want change. It's not really a, a mass movement of Americans. Mm. He hasn't appealed to middle America just yet. It's, it's really a, a sort of a smaller fringe of people that are really tuning into it all. Mm. And with 17 candidates and maybe now 16 or 15, mm -hmm. um, it's such a diffuse area. He's right. the one that's able to grab attention. Mm -hmm. And I think at this stage, it's about grabbing attention. Mm -hmm. And it'll have to be a transition for people to now take a candidate more seriously. Mm 